other speakers and guests. In case you didn't get that, it was hello. Thank you for coming to listen to me share what I've learned about communication beyond words. Because maybe like me, you've heard what I've now discovered is a myth, that communication is just 7% words. I discovered what I consider to be sign language when I was this tall in primary school. We sat and the teacher sat and opened a book. And she talked to us about all the letters of the alphabet. Each day, a different letter. Every letter had a story and a sound. B, for example, was for the ball that the little boy saw in the field. And O was for... Oh! A frog just jumped across the path. I still remember pretty much all the signs. And so does my sister, which means if either of us became deaf or dumb, we would still be able to communicate to each other, albeit very slowly. My next encounter with sign language was actually reading about Helen Keller. She became blind and deaf at 19 months old. Sign language, as most of you would know it, is of no use if you can't see. So, her teacher found a way of tapping different points on the hand, meaning different things. And a double tap means yes, and a swipe means no. But A, E, I, O, and U actually are the same as in British Sign Language. Helen Keller, despite being deaf, did learn to speak. However, she says her greatest disappointment is that she didn't speak any better. And my favourite quote of her is, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Then, as an adult, I discovered sign language. And I always wondered, because my sister and I could effectively speak through signs, why sign language wasn't taught to young children? And then everybody would know sign language. Well, I discovered a few more things. Something called Makaton which I only discovered recently, is actually based on sign language and is used to teach adults and children with disabilities how to communicate if they have difficulty speaking. But it's also used, and this is how I discovered it, for babies, so that before they are able to speak, they can communicate with their parents or their carers. Now in that case, this means yes. And this one you'll probably recognise means no. Makaton is actually the initials of the people who developed it. I can't quite remember the names, but I think it was Mark, Catherine and Tony. And it is always used in conjunction with the spoken word, unlike sign language. So, things can get a little confusing with sign language. And I also discovered that 
as with all foreign languages, there is the British Sign Language, but there's also the German Sign Language, and so on. So even with Sign Language, that doesn't mean that we'd all be able to communicate e with each other simply through signs. However, there are a few universal signs, such as Hitler and Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> now, you might think that a universal sign is a thumbs up, meaning, okay, it's good. However, if any of you have gone diving, you will realise that that means you're going back up to the surface. And that is okay. So, you might then think, this means yes, and this means no. But beware, in Bulgaria it's the opposite. It just goes to show how easy it is to be misunderstood. Just as Mary Ban, who did the research on communication, was. When he said that it's 7% words, 38% tone of voice, 55% physiology. And that means how we use our body and the 53 muscles. He was actually only talking about when we are expressing emotions and how other people understand them. So, my vision is to have a world where we understand and communicate with each other better. And that means first seek to understand and then be understood. And Consider the verbal and non-verbal aspects of the message that you are wanting to communicate. Mm -hmm.